Welcome to another Howls and Growls Breakdown, and today we're talking about how Minnesota's pick and roll offense shredded Denver's defense to grab a huge win and take back the first seed in the West, and that all starts with Mike Conley. The Wolves were dominant on both ends throughout this game, particularly in the first half, but the thing that really stood out to me was how they twisted up Denver's defense with their pick and roll and ball screening actions. Once it was obvious that Denver wasn't going to be able to guard Minnesota there, they were able to lean on their staunch defense to propel them to a pretty easy win in the end. And again, if we are talking ball screen dominance, we're talking Mike Connolly at the controls, so let's take a look at how he wrecked Denver's defense with the help of his teammates in this game. So we can start with some pretty simple stuff here. Basic double drag, high pick and roll. Conley comes off. Nas Reed drifts here as a shooting and a scoring threat. So Reggie Jackson can't slide over to help in on Gobert. Conley draws Jokic toward him on the drive. So Gobert can slip in behind the coverage and catch that lob finish. Nothing groundbreaking there, but right away you could kind of tell the Nuggets weren't going to have any answers for Minnesota's pick and roll game. And I love the way that Conley is able to manipulate those same actions into different results. It's that same double drag action here. You see Denver are switching it again with MPJ onto Nas and Gordon onto the ball, but in that switch this gap opens up, so Jackson has to come over in help when Conley goes through that gap, and now Jackson's man is open in the corner for the three ball. When you have two bigs who can punish defenses in ball screen actions like Nas Reed and Rudy Gobert, and then you have Conley pulling the levers on it all, it doesn't take much for a defense to get muddled up for a second, and Minnesota were really executing when that happened in this game. You see here they're set up for their empty corner pick and roll action with Conley and Gobert, but Conley pulls Reed into it, and then they go into that flare action. Reed flares out into the slot. Gobert steps up to set the screen. The defense is a fraction late to figure it all out, and Reed has an advantage to the rim where he can get the bucket and the foul. And really, the reason that Conley is so fantastic in pick and roll is how quickly he reads and reacts to the defensive coverage. On this possession, Denver are hedging out here with Jordan pushing up. So Reed slips the screen, Conley hits the pocket pass, Jackson needs to rotate off the corner, Denver are helping the helper like they're supposed to, but Reed makes the right pass to keep them in rotation. MPJ has to dig down, and now the corner man is the final pass for an open look. So Conley is the first domino here, but it's a constant game of reading the defense and making the right pass that the Wolves played so well in this game. And when Conley and his team knew that Denver couldn't guard these ball screen actions, they started mixing in their little variations. I love this action they run here when Conley hands the ball off and Gobert ghosts that first ball screen and flows into a pin down here for Conley to pivot back off of. It's all designed to get into that empty corner action they love, where DeAndre Jordan is stuck here in between the ball and the roll man, and in the end, he's caught in no man's land for a second too long, and Conley can get to his floater game. So they run that in the corner there, but they can also get to that same action in the middle of the floor and find similar profit. Again, Conley flips it back to J-Mac, Gobert comes and sets this away screen now for Conley. Gobert is so good at reversing those screens, so Brown is hung up on it here, and Conley is in space, so DJ has to step up. Conley can drop that pass off to Gobert when he rolls down the middle of the lane, and they get an easy bucket. So you put the defense in a bind in the corner by sticking the big man between the two scorers, and you crumble the defense in the middle by having the big man have to step up to take away Conley's pull-up three. Both of those results are coming off the same pre-ball screen action. And now Conley uses the threat of the roll man to create for others. They're into the empty corner stuff again, but now Jackson is coming all the way over to be the third defender in it. 
So Conley goes to the opposite side. Nikhil Alexander Walker comes and sets this pin in screen, and Jordan McLaughlin hasn't missed the corner three for six months, so you know that's going in. So all of a sudden, that two man game that Denver has struggled with on one side of the floor turns into a wide open corner three on the other side of the floor. That's how you manipulate the defense in these ball screening actions. So now the defense has to react to it. It's the same empty corner action. It's that same heavy help here from Jackson. But this time they make sure the corner is covered up. In fact, they overcommit. Jackson starts backpedaling out there. And everyone forgets the big French dude standing in the middle of the paint. It's a slick pass through traffic. It's an easy finish. And it's a really wonderful manipulation of the defense again from Mike Conley. And above all, the reason that Conley can force defenders to panic or overcommit in any of these situations is because he's a legitimate knockdown shooter coming off a ball screen. If the defense doesn't come up to touch on those screens, he's going to walk into jumpers and he's currently shooting 44.5% on pull-up threes, which is the highest in the lead of any player attempting at least two per game. He made another four of them in this game, which twisted up Denver's defense even further as they tried to grapple with his shooting, his playmaking, and his ability to navigate ball screen actions all night long. It was another masterclass from Minnesota's mastermind point guard, and when you start thinking about playoff X factors, Conley's ability to have nights like this on a semi-regular basis certainly has to come into that line of thinking. Thanks again for watching Howls and Growls, please subscribe for more.